Hey everyone, it's Pat Keegan, and welcome back to the DIY Home Build channel. And I want to introduce another skill building video to you today, in which I'm going to show you how, using some basic geometry, some basic math, how you can calculate what the maximum height of a cabinet can be if it's built in one piece, what the maximum height of a cabinet can be such that when you tip that cabinet into place it's not going to get stuck or wedged between the floor and the ceiling and I know we've all been there we've all done it we've all either made something or bought something or moved something from one room to another and tried to tip it into place and it gets stuck between the floor and the ceiling and so I'm going to show you how you can size your cabinet um, and determine the height of your cabinet such that that will not happen to you if you decide to build a floor to ceiling cabinet. And it takes a little bit of basic geometry, which I'm gonna assume that you have some basic working knowledge with of some fundamental geometry. And if you don't, then please post a comment and I'd be happy to explain it. Um, but right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the the Google wrote the Google SketchUp here, the SketchUp uh, rotation tool, and I'm gonna just rotate this cabinet forward. And for sake of argument, as a novice woodworker, cabinet maker, it might be tempting to think that if my ceiling is 8 feet tall, that I can just make my cabinet 8 feet tall, and I'm going to be able to go in and tip it into place without a problem. And that really couldn't be further than the truth. And I think it's just easy to have a visual aid here to, to try to help demonstrate that. So watch what happens. Pretend that uh, you and I have made our, our cabinet for our, one of our clients, our favorite clients, because they pay us really well. And we built this beautiful cherry cabinet that's 15 inches deep, and we built it 96 inches tall to match our ceiling, which is a mock-up you can see here that I created. And we get on the job site, and the, the client's all excited, and we're all excited because we're going to get paid. And we tip that puppy back up, and watch what happens to the top left back edge of that cabinet, the top left corner as it touches the ceiling. You can see it kind of starts to disappear right there and it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse until we manage to actually tip it all the way up. Oh, and then it's magically better because we built it exactly 96 inches. So this is a big problem and I can tell you right now, I'll give you away a little bit of the punchline here. If you built a cabinet 96 inches tall to fit in a 96 inch tall ceiling, you would have to take off more than an inch of the back edge of that cabinet. And, and we, you never would want to have to do that in your own home or let alone a customer or a client's house you know, where everybody's excited and they have to watch you butcher the cabinet that you just made for them and that they're paying you for. So you don't want to ever do that. So I'm going to show you a quick way to figure out what the height of the cabinet can be such that you can tip it into a place without it getting stuck. And the reason we want to know this sometimes is because we want to maximize our cabinet space. We don't want to just make a, a seven foot cabinet necessarily in an eight foot ceiling, although you may choose to do that. Or, you know, even worse, you know, try to guess what the height of the cabinet would be and then hide the rest with crown molding, which you would do anyway. You would want to maybe, maybe hide the little gap at the top, but essentially we want to try to maximize the amount of cabinet space we have. And so in order to do that, you should understand how this actually works. And I think this will actually help you, even if you're out buying a piece of furniture at a store or something like that, you know, is it going to fit? The first thing you want to ask is, am I going to be able to tip this thing into place without getting stuck? So this will help you. So I'm just going to tilt this cabinet again, further out, further out until it's just about touching the ceiling here at the top edge and I wanted to point out maybe something that's not very obvious the first time you see it is that when I tip this cabinet into place I'm gonna set it on the front edge and I'm gonna tip it up into place and the first place that would come into contact with the ceiling is the back edge and I'll call that the top left corner or the the top back edge and so if I just kind of draw a line here from the front bottom edge, which is going to be resting on the floor, to the um, top back edge, what do I know about that, that line here that I just drew? And I'm going to call that line, while you think about that, I'm going to call that line C. And what we know about this line is, since the 
bottom front edge of the cabinet is resting on the floor and we're tipping it into place, this is going to be the tallest point ever in the arc of this cabinet swinging into place and that's as I said the top, uh, top back edge. What is the maximum height that that can be and clear the ceiling? Well it's just the ceiling height 96 inches. So I know that C here the maximum height that C can be and it says a little bit different measurement here because it's not I'm not exactly on the ceiling but it's 96 inches. So as long as the distance from the front bottom edge to the top back edge doesn't exceed 96 inches, I'm going to be able to tip this cabinet into place perfectly. Assuming that the ceiling is, you know, 100% theoretically perfectly flat. And it isn't always, so you have to be careful of that. But anyway, so if I, again, kind of take this, um, let me rotate this kind of back, and I think you already probably see it now, but I'm going to let the suspense hang there for a while. Let's tilt this thing back all the way till it rests right on the cabinet wall, or against the wall here. Well, what do you notice about the intersection between these two corners of this uh, side of the cabinet rectangle here? You notice that this creates a perfect right triangle. And in geometry, if you know two sides of the triangle or the diagonal or hypotenuse of a, of a right triangle and one of its sides, you can calculate the other sides using the Pythagorean theorem. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So I know that the hypotenuse of this triangle here that I'm illustrating with the mouse cursor is 96 inches. And again, that's the maximum height, that's the maximum hypotenuse, really, that that can be because it demonstrates the maximum height or maximum distance between the front bottom edge of the cabinet and the top back edge of the cabinet. And if we keep that under 96, we'll be okay. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to calculate A using Pythagorean's theorem. Now, I'm cheating a little bit, and I'm using Excel because I like to use Excel. And uh, because I can set up a lot of formulas in it. And I'm just going to set these to 4 and 5 real quick. And I know that a 3, 4, 5 is a right triangle. And that's going to be a lesson for another time. But Pythagorean's theorem basically says if I have a right triangle and I have um, one of the measurements of the legs and the measure of the hypotenuse, I can get the other side very easily. And the theorem is basically, you can see it here, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a is one of the legs, which is representing the height of our cabinet here on the back edge. B is the other leg, which represents the bottom edge here, or the depth of our cabinet. And I've set this depth to be 15 inches. You can play with it and make it whatever you want, because it's an interesting calculation. Um, you'll see the deeper your cabinet gets, the shorter it has to be to fit it in, in, in one piece, if you want to tip it into place in one piece. And then C, of course, is the hypotenuse of the diagonal. Well, we already have B, which is 15, and we already have C, which we calculated was the height of our ceiling and is 96. So you can do this with a calculator or math. I happen to, to write an Excel formula here to very quickly do Pythagorean's theorem. And I, I actually did it the long way because I know that it has it in here somewhere. I just didn't find it quick enough. So if I take the square root of 96 squared minus 15 squared, if I do that math and then I take the square root of that number, I'm going to actually get what the distance is. And since I wrote out the formula, you can trust me that I wrote it out properly, let me just fill in the values. So I calculated B is the depth of our cabinet, and that's 15. And then I calculated C as the, as the height of our ceiling, or the diagonal or hypotenuse there of that triangle, which is 96. And what I get is 94 and 5 6. Now I didn't optimize this calculation to round to the nearest 16th or the nearest 8th, so you'll have to forgive me for that. But I did write it down here that 5 6 is basically... 0.83333, and that's very close to 13 sixteenths. So 94 and 5 sixths is very close to 94 and 13 sixteenths. Anyway, the point is you can very clearly see that the height of our cabinet cannot exceed 94 and 13 sixteenths if we want to build that cabinet as one large cabinet and tip it into place and expect to clear the ceiling. So 
Typically, you're not going to build it exactly 94 and 13 sixteenths. You're going to probably take a little bit more off that. You're going to make it 94 and a half or something like that. So for a cabinet that's 15 inches, that would be perfectly fine. Let's just say, though, that your ceiling's not perfectly 96. What if you measure and the, the lowest spot is 93? So we'll put 93 in here. I still want a 15 inch deep cabinet. Oh my gosh, look at this. Don't pay attention to the 7 ninths. That's just Excel's way of doing that. I didn't optimize the formula. But you can see it's just under 92 inches that I would have to build this cabinet. That could be the maximum height that I could clear the ceiling. So um, you can also play with the width if I wanted 24 inches and I have a 93 inch high ceiling. So you're always going to want to measure the ceiling and you're always going to want to know the depth of your cabinet. And if you do that, you can always calculate what the maximum height that your cabinet can be. So anyway, I hope that was clear an explanation. I, I tend to repeat myself a few times just so I hopefully say it the right way that it clicks with everyone. Um, but it's a very interesting geometry problem and very useful when you're making cabinets that go floor to ceiling so that you can optimize or maximize the amount of cabinet space. Of course, the alternative is if you want to get it as close to the ceiling as possible, and you really don't want to build it an inch shorter than the ceiling or you're not going to be able to hide it with crown molding you can always build the cabinet in two pieces a bottom and a top you can set the bottom in place and then lift the top and slide it in you know and wiggle it into place and leave very little room between the top of the cabinet and the ceiling that's okay too um, typically you know we do that in some types of built-ins but not in every one uh, a lot of pantry cabinets we want to build exactly in one large piece and just optimize and maximize our space so anyway i hope that video has been useful please let me know what you think um, and if you want to see something else or if something wasn't clear in the explanation just let me know and as always i really appreciate your comments and i appreciate the fact that you're taking the time to watch and i hope it was worthwhile thanks again and we'll see you next time